Wow, look at that. That's just chipping away. Crumbling. Yeah. And that's what happens when OSB gets wet. Yeah. It just falls apart. It's disintegrates. Hey everyone. Today we're going to talk about WRBs, also known as water resistant barriers. Or weather resistant barriers. Or weather resistive barriers. <laughs> or water resistive barriers. So we're going to be talking about Tyvek in particular. Which is the most popular house wrap there is. So let's de debunk the myths. Let's start off watching a video um, of how Tyvek is actually made. This is on the DuPont Tyvek YouTube page. So even though Tyvek looks like paper, it's actually just plastic. Yeah, it's uh, HDPE. Poly yep, high, high density, density polyethylene, which yeah. is what most of the stuff we have is. I mean, the mouse, our headphones and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like there's this liquid polyethylene that's passed under high pressure through a really small diameter pipe um, and as soon as it escapes that pipe you can see at the end there's a really small nozzle where it like compresses the liquid even more and then as soon as it's sprayed out of that pipe it turns into these fibers it has a chemical reaction right when it I don't think it's the... chemical just physical it's converting okay. from liquid to a gas uh, liquid to solid fibers okay once it's introduced to air, air. Yeah. yeah so all these fibers are like uh, randomly dispersed on a conveyor belt yeah and i think the the key is that when these fibers come out it kind of looks like uh the way fiberglass insulation is made it, it, it all comes out in a stringy form but then it's it's uh, compacted together and it's this interwoven pattern that it creates which is the uh what gives tyvek its yeah. weather resistant properties yeah it's it's not directional you can see over here especially in this uh, screenshot it's it's very random so it's just several layers deep. It's all these microscopic fibers that are yes. all random. Yeah, and then it's compressed. Yeah. And flattened out into a paper thin form, which is what, a millimeter thick? Is that how thick it is? I, I don't know. Something I mean, it's just, like it's, that. It's the thinnest yeah. paper, which... Oh, wow. That's yeah. microscopic. Which is kind of interesting. It kind of reminds you of a... a sponge? A, a sponge or a, a spray foam cellulose or... Uh, even OSB, just like all these particles coming together, mm. uh, sandwiched in. Though, though it looks like there's some air gaps in here, but because the pattern is interwoven, there's the not a continuous air gap going right. from the top yeah. to the bottom part of that. So then that sheet is rolled out and into these big Tyvek rolls that you yeah, the Tyvek rolls. You, yeah. you buy them in a what eight eight or nine foot lengths or yeah. you buy them four foot lengths and. It's just a big roll of what looks like paper, and you just take that and you wrap your house with it. It's not paper, it's plastic. Right. It looks like paper. Right. House wrap, yeah. yeah it's so versatile. I mean, it, it, people make clothing out of that too. Really? Yeah. And then, but that's more for like avant garde fashion. But um, even the USPS envelopes, those are also made from Tyvek. Is it Tyvek or mm -hmm. is it just some other house wrap? No, I think it's Tyvek. Because okay. I know there's a lot of different. Uh, competitors out there, or, or let's say copiers. Yeah, because Tyvek is definitely the most popular. But like, if you go to Lowe's or something, they have their Lowe's house rep, which I assume has very similar properties to Tyvek. But Tyvek is uh, continues to advance their technology as all these competitors come out and uh, do different things. They continue to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, there's a reason why the Tyvek rolls are usually twice the price of the generic brands that you can find at big box stores, yeah. because they are. Then those generic brands, from what I've seen, are all woven. They're all directional, so there's okay. an air gap passing through it. Tyvek uses this proprietary interwoven pattern, which allows it to be an actual air barrier. Mm -hmm. Though yeah. that is debatable, because if you Google it, there are sources that say Tyvek is not an air barrier. But DuPont themselves says Tyvek is, is an air barrier. Yeah. But what I've found is the best way to test whether or not a material is an air barrier is to take the material and blow on it. Mm -hmm. And if air passes through, then it's not an air barrier. So we just so happen to have a sample of Tyvek yeah. here. So it's an air barrier. <laughs> it's pretty ingenious material. Yeah. So the, yeah, you can't, you can't tear it. I mean, you can only cut this with a pair of scissors. And that makes it a good material for all those mailing envelopes too, to prevent theft. Yes. 
Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, it looks like paper and you just think, oh yeah, I can tear this. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. In school, in architecture school, we actually used Tyvek to wrap our disaster relief shelter. You did that, yes. yes. Yeah, of course, that's all we used and it was really noisy. <laughs> it, <laughs> because it kept flapping? Yeah, because it wasn't fastened down everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. you, it, it is paper. It's loud. Yeah. But it's recyclable. It is 100% recyclable because it's it's just plastic. Yep. So we discussed the, the air barrier properties of this thing, but it's really known for the water resistant barriers, obviously, because that's probably more important than the air barrier. Yeah. When you're wrapping yeah. a house, you don't want water to come behind this into your sheathing. So there's three different types of WRVs. Um, the... That this is like overall weather resistant barriers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and the olden days, the most common type used was what is called 15 pound asphalt felt. Uh, DuPont came out with this uh, polyethylene house wrap that uh, did a better job than asphalt, 15 pound asphalt felt did. The IRC, the Inter International Resident Code, Residential Code, requires a 15 pound asphalt felt, or that is the minimum. Oh, it okay. says or other uh, approved methods. So that's still considered appropriate even nowadays? Yes, that's up to code. Wow. So, but everybody goes well beyond that by using something like Tyvek. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, you talk to people who use Zip system and they'll consider this to not be uh, adequate. Yeah, it's interesting so. because, I mean, we evolved, like we said, this house 60 years old used the asphalt felt and then you, you go up into uh, uh, the polyethylene methods, the home wrap, the Tyvek that, that's used. And now the past 20 years, people have started saying, hey, this isn't even, even sufficient. Yeah. Now we're using this all-in-one method that, that uh, is the zip system yeah. or, or similar. The green stuff that you see yes. on a lot of homes nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there are still people who believe this is the only way to go. Just as I think when Tyvek came out, there were people who said, this is not enough. We right. need the black you gotta um, use the asphalt. Felt. Asphalt, felt. right? Yeah, yeah, and so, that's that's the way technology is. Is it's hard to on any change for that matter. Right, people the, are the good old it. boys, the old school people, uh, like to stick with what they know, and uh, yeah. I, I like to make the comparison of uh, when it comes to compression fittings for copper pipe. Mm. Uh, Pex lot, versus copper. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Just copper soldered versus compression fittings. In general, okay. like pro press. Um, this is more plumber jargon, I guess. Hmm. But the plumbers I talk to, they they don't trust uh, pro press method. This, these compression fittings, they trust soldered copper, and it's sort of an old school method. Oh, I see. Yeah. They they trust the good old tested method versus mm -hmm. pro press, which is proven to be just as good. Yeah. So when it comes to applying Tyvek to your house, you have to use staples. Is it staples or nails? Either. Or is it, is, do they require you to use a proprietary? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. No. But it looks like... Um, this like this video that we're going to watch now, they look use that... I think they're using these called cap nails. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's a nail with a cap around it. Yeah, that, yeah. and that is to uh, prevent the water from coming in. Yeah, I think the cap has some ridges on it that make it airtight. So on this graphic you can see how many fasteners are actually used. It That's looks like, all those penetrations. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure DuPont specifies exactly what the spacing needs to be in order to keep the warranty, but it looks like it's about 12 inches on center. And that's that's a ton of penetrations. Yeah. Which which brings up the question of with that many penetrations, are you compromising, yeah, compromising the, 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 the air resistant matter, the weather resistant yes. properties of this material. Yeah so this so this video is going to demonstrate the water resistive properties of Tyvek, in particular when it comes to rainfall. So they've taped over their joints with the Tyvek tape, which is not necessary. You could just overlap it a foot, I think. Yeah, I think the most common method of application is to uh, wrap your house and then have a, at least a 12 inch overlap and then you're stapling it. Stapling or pinning it, yeah. Yeah, yeah pinning it. And so if you uh, were to tape all the seams, this would act as an appropriate air barrier. That's true. Because without that, it, it will flap. Mm -hmm. The air will get under the joints. Yeah. So what do people use as an air barrier if they don't tape it? Well, there's, Just ignore it? There's lots of different air barriers. I, I try to look at them as more of a 
a system of components. Uh, and I think the most common air barrier used in houses is drywall. Yeah, just drywall and your framing. Yeah. Those two work together as an air barrier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're, you're allowing the air to get all the way into the drywall, which uh, some people can see as an issue because that allows that vapor to potentially come in. And if it doesn't have a way to escape, can condense into right. water. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's showing uh, all the water like just how much water they're pouring right on the window. And I think the window is the most critical joint for them. Vulnerable. Obviously, that's yeah. where, where you're opening is windows and doors. So they have a specific. Um, it looks like this. It doesn't look like tape because it's a big piece of like a flashing almost mm -hmm. on yeah. that windowsill. Yeah. And they've taped around the window on the side and the top. There's a particular process of installation you have to do around these windows yes. in order for it to, like there's certain overlaps you have to make in order for But it that's to... your whole wall too. Like you're, you have to start from the bottom and walk up. So you can't have your top layer of Tyvek overlapped by the bottom layer. Right, yes. There's a sequence to it. Yes, the overlap yeah. has to be from top down. Yeah, otherwise your water is going to go behind that top layer and go behind the Tyvek. Mm. So it has to overlap. Yeah, if you think about how water moves. Yeah. So that video shows us that Tyvek is a really good moisture barrier. Right. All that water that they were throwing at that wall, the spraying at that wall was just um, flowing away from the building. Right. When installed correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and we also know that it's a good air barrier because you blew into it and yes, nothing it, was... It can serve, the, the material itself yeah. serves as an air barrier. Now, yeah. they're just like any material, there are seams and where these, where these joints are, that's not, it, it has to be installed correctly in order for it to be considered a continuous air barrier. There's this really good website we found explaining air barriers because it's a, a complicated subject that everyone has a different, has a different opinion. Yeah. yeah, different opinion, different definition for. Mm -hmm. So this website shows how air barrier can actually be achieved in a building. Yeah, the four most common ways that an air barrier is achieved. Yes. So this first one is just by using drywall and framing, which I think is a majority of homes. Yes. Yeah. This is the this is the drywall method. Like we said, drywall is an air barrier, uh, and that you have to tape and mud your joints just like you would to get a smooth surface. And I, I close all the holes and any right. penetrations and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So the second diagram shows how you can achieve an air barrier in your building using just polyethylene. Not house wrap. Yeah. Not high density polyethylene, just thin polyethylene. Yeah, a thin sheet of plastic. Plastic. That you can't blow through either. Yeah. <laughs> I like your test. Thank you. So this has to be, you can see at the bottom, it has to be wrapped underneath that bottom stud. Yeah, your bottom plate. Bottom plate, mm -hmm. yeah. Which so has, has to be considered at the beginning of your framing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can have a piece sticking out and then when you're actually wrapping the outside of the building that somehow attaches yeah, to that attach bottom flap. Yeah. The next wall section shows an exterior air barrier using exterior sheathing. Mm -hmm. The first two we showed were interior air barriers. Yeah. This is an exterior air barrier. So this is... So this is going to stop the air at the point of your... The uh, exterior point of your Yeah, before stops. it gets into yeah. your framing. Yeah. So this would be the zip system, yes. right, for example. Yeah. Now, the important thing that we need to point out with this is that your joints for your sheathing have to be taped and sealed. Mm -hmm. This isn't just everybody who applies because every house has sheathing on it. Yeah, just OSP yeah. sheathing, but and they don't tape just that. do that, that's not an adequate air barrier because you're not taping it and uh, sealing your joints. Yeah. So, so what about the SIP system? I mean, that has joints, but I think the SIP system is actually interlocking. Yes. So you have the insulation of one part of one SIP, like sitting inside another SIP. Yeah, it's lap joints. But yeah. at the same time, if there if there is a visible joint, that has to be taped. taped. And, and then the fourth method is an exterior air barrier using house wrap, which, which is the type step. Type, yeah. So the, the important thing about this is that you have to uh, wrap your tie bag underneath your bottom plate and you have to have tape joints. And you also have to wrap in the top plate too. You can yeah, see that. top plate and the bottom plate. Okay. And you have to have caulking and sealant and tape joints mm -hmm. to create a, a, 
an adequate continuous air barrier. Air barrier. Okay, that was very uh, helpful. Yeah, understanding how that works. Now most houses aren't going to do that. It seems like most houses use the interior drywall as your air barrier. Yeah. I think that's what our house is as yeah. well. So the other property of Divec is the vapor permeance. So it's, we said we talked about the moisture barrier, we talked about it being an air barrier. The third thing is how it acts as a vapor barrier. So now vapor just refers to the gas form of water when it evaporates. Yes, it's the, it's the air coming through meeting the... When the, hot air or cold air yeah. meet, it can... Cause condensation. Condens con yeah but that's still after it converts into water. So we're talking about it in its gas, gas form. Okay. Yeah, when it's water vapor. Okay, and there's a, a way to calculate... Um, the permeability of a material. Yes, and it's called the perme permeability value of or perm. perm. You often hear the term, oh, this, this material has a perm rating of X, Y, Z. Yeah, so it's the ability of material to allow or restrict Water vapor. Yeah, vapor is the important word. It's not just water. Yeah. So the lower the number, the better it is at restricting the movement of vapor. The higher the, num the number, the more it allows vapor to move. Mm -hmm. So the lower the number, the more impermeable. The more impermeable it is. Yeah. So I read that the minimum allowed permeability of your house wrap is five perms. You know what the perm rating of Tyvek is? No. 56. Seems very high. Yeah. So that means it is, it's allowing a lot of water vapor to come. Through. To pass through. Yes. Yeah. So when it comes to permeability value, uh, one perm is equal to one gram of water vapor per square foot of water per inch of mercury pressure differential. <laughs> so we'll just keep it simple. Yeah. We'll just tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. So something like OSB has a perm rating of around two. Yeah, two to three perms. So just OSB by itself is not good enough to act as a house wrap because it has to be a minimum of five perms. So OSB restricts the movement of water vapor too much. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe because of all the glue or the resin or something inside it, it's, it's too restrictive. So that vapor will get in and not be able to escape or it's going to take a really long time for that to evaporate. vapor to evaporate and potentially cause mold and rot. Yeah. So here's where the big debate comes in. So the manufacturers of Tyvek, DuPont, they say the higher the perm rating, better. So if any water gets behind it, it evaporates. But then the people who are all for the zip system, they're like 56 is way too high for perm rating. So then like the zip system, which we'll talk about next week, um, that has a perm rating of like 12 to 16 or something. So that's much lower perm rating. It doesn't allow water vapor to restrict as. But still above the five minimum. Yes. Rating. Yeah. So, so far, we're not really made a stance on Tyvek, whether we, we know it's an older way of building. We know it it works if done right. Like It's tried and true. It's, yeah. it's a trusted method. I think most uh, builders are going to agree that Tyvek works. Um, it's really the, the new guys that are saying, hey, Switch to zip. Yeah, Tyvek may not necessarily, well, it may not be the best thing out there. Yeah. So I found this one video by Matt Rizingo where uh, Tyvek didn't work. So this building has different um, exterior facades. So this facade we're looking at right now is brick. And he's staring off the Tyvek behind the brick and it's in pretty good condition. It's not, uh, it hasn't failed that badly. There's some rot and mold at the bottom of this OSP sheathing and even over there at that point where he's poking his knife in, but it's not too bad. It's in pretty good condition. Yeah, all in all, it seems to be okay. Yeah, and now let's go forward in the video where he um, looks at the Tyvek behind stucco, the other side of the house. And that is, that's awful. That's just rotten. Yeah, and how can it be so different from one side of the house to the other? So in his video, he explains yeah. that it's because of the air gap. Right. The air, so when you're using a brick facing, you automatically have to um, allow for a one inch minimum air gap be behind that brick. But in this case, the stucco was applied directly to grade 
D paper, which was then applied directly to the Tyvek. So any water that was soaked up by the stucco was getting transferred to that OSP sheeting. There wasn't any air gap allowing the water to escape or allowing vapor to escape. It's very important to not only know how to install Tyvek properly, but your whole wall system needs to be considered if, when using a house wrap like this. You can't stick something like stucco directly on it and expect it to yeah. perform the same way. Yeah. You have to consider things like air gaps. Yeah. So you have to consider the So whole how system. would you establish an air gap with stucco? With stucco. I mean, that's that's a whole different Yeah, I, I assume thing. that you would probably use a, a more airtight method of building perhaps a rigid foam on your exterior. And then the stucco on top yeah. of that or something. Because the because the rigid foam is not going to rot out or anything. It's a it serves as a water barrier, air barrier. Yeah. So you, everything is gonna stop at that rigid foam. So it looks like the the failure of Tyvek in this application is due to installation failure. Yeah. I think the the science behind the material, it's proven that it works. Yes. And I think that's like we discussed in previous videos, it's about how like any product will fail if installed incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's important to consider how difficult certain things are to install because I mean I, I just take that I take that back. I don't agree with that statement that any product, because there are certain products that were created, like in this video, he talks about how paper flashing was used below your windowsill or at the bottom, at your bottom plate of the wall. And that seems like a really bad idea. No matter how you try to install it, it seems like using a paper-based material to get water away from your windows and your building will not work. So there are materials like Tyvek that will work if installed properly, but you have to be careful. You have to be cautious of other materials that will not work no matter what you do. Okay, so you're saying a paper-based material, like a grade D paper, not not polyethylene like Tyvek. Yeah, yeah. So there's three classes of vapor barriers. There's uh, class one, which has a perm rating of 0.1 or less, and these materials are considered impermeable. This includes things like polyethylene so that'll be this stuff and aluminum foil yeah you I mean this has no holes in it at all this is not going to let any vapor any in. vapor in. Mm -hmm. so yeah so that's probably class one material yeah and then uh class two is a material that has a perm rating of 0.1 to 1.0 mm -hmm. and uh this is considered semi impermeable i don't know how much <laughs> weight that a word like that holds but uh this is Thing, things like uh, two inch or greater EPS or the craft facing, the paper on facing glass on bats. fiberglass bats. So that's the asphalt impregnated craft paper. Mm -hmm. That's basically paper. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then there's class three, which has a perm rating of 1.0 to 10. 10. And this is semi permeable, and these, this is something like a latex paint would yeah. be considered that. Uh, so, like we've said, Tyvek is the most popular house wrap out there uh, but people are starting to question the use of tyvek and uh, there's this big ongoing push towards yeah push towards zip a zip system yeah sheathing and taping which is zip system is a an all-in-one system yeah i mean you drive down the road here in in dallas and i'd say most of the buildings now that you see mainly commercial they're all zip system yeah. Residential building owners still use Tyvek. Uh, but some are, some are starting to use the Zip. Some are, yeah. yeah. There's some higher end ones. And so Zip is something we're going to discuss next week and how it compares to Tyvek and how it can accomplish all three, the air, vapor, and water. And perhaps form, perform well even as, better. Yeah, sheathing and insulation. Even. Yeah. I mean, if you look at a building section, uh, you have all these different callouts for your different materials. Well, you knock out about five of those in one if you use zip yeah. properly. So let's talk about that next week. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Okay. And we'll see you all next week. Bye for now.